Hi everyone, we are back again with another Spotlight Series project and today we have um, SKF with us, which is Security Knowledge Framework. And I feel that this is one project which is so much relevant and uh, uh, this is required in any organization for training, uh, for getting the requirements and whatnot. So today we have Glenn with us, who's gonna, who's actually one of the leaders for this project and who has put in so much efforts in building what it is today. And um, let me tell you one interesting fact about before I uh, give it over to Glenn, uh, that I got to meet uh, Glenn and Rick last year at one of the conferences in India. And uh, one thing I got to know about this project is people say that I want to work on something and then build on it. But they said, uh, we want to have this project. And then they said, okay, we have it ready. You just have to accept it. So that's how it became OWASP SKF. So they built it and then told people that, yeah, it's there. So let me give it over to Glenn and let him talk about more uh, this about this project. Yes. All right. Thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, yeah, it was indeed uh, a while back when we met uh, in India. We also did uh, a nice uh, SKF workshop there, actually. Um, and yeah, together with my brother, we are now building on SKF for quite some time, right? I think uh, this is like year five or six that we actually work on SKF. Uh, you know, we came from a very long way. I think, you know, in the meantime, we I think we refactored it like four times, you know, in total. Like the first version was, was PHP, then it was like uh, Python, one single file, then it was Python Flask. Yeah, and, and so it really evolves over time, the whole security knowledge framework. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the security knowledge framework, uh, it's like you said, we really wanted to help developers, empower them, you know, uh, to be able to have uh, and give them the right, you know, awareness and knowledge to build secure applications by design. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had like a tons of new features where we can now launch like the labs that we already had in SKF. Uh, right. Normally you needed to run them locally, like exporting, uh, you know, running the Python scripts or Docker files. But now we have also a feature in SKF where you can deploy the labs directly from SKF. Right. And we were also working together with uh, other OWASP uh, projects. So, you know, I, I, am, I think it's maybe also good to just give you like a brief overview, like uh, mm -hmm. how it looks like the new screen and uh, the new flow. So let me see if I can share my screen with you. Share. Yeah, so, that would be amazing. Yeah, I can see you your see screen. My screen. Okay, Absolutely. perfect. So, um, you know, the, the new for landing page of SKF, we actually have like a, a couple of things. So we have the old school way of logging in with username, password, right? Uh, but we also have the skip login. Mm -hmm. um, you can also configure this page to always skip the login because we actually got the feedback that a lot of companies don't use the login mechanism. Uh, mm -hmm. They always skip. So we also have now a feature where you can skip this whole page by default. Mm -hmm. So you will always log in as a sort of anonymous user. Um, okay. So that's one of the things. And like I said, we prepared it a lot. So we mm -hmm. also played with, um, you know, open ID uh, mm -hmm. and a, a server gateway in between. So you could also do the authentication, for example, with uh, GitHub or AD or Google, stuff like that. So. Also, we are ready uh, for big organizations so they can also implement it, you know, with their uh, like AD integration or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the new landing page. Um, we can log in with the default uh, information, right? The admin and test-skf. So this is a new landing page of uh, the security knowledge framework. It looks mm -hmm. really different uh, for the people who already knew SKF. Uh, yeah, it's really different than before. Um, we also have a very awesome dark mode. So if you're wow. working on it, uh, you have something easier for the eyes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that is also something nifty. Uh, yeah. And like I said, we really looked at how we can collaborate more with all, mm -hmm. all the other OWASP projects, right? Now the OWASP Juice Shop Labs also available in the security knowledge framework. We have mm -hmm. references, the, the OWASP cheat sheets, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are quite important. 
Well, we already had and always have the ASVS, of course, the checklist in the security knowledge framework. Uh, right. We're working with the MASVS team of OWASP. We also get the mobile requirements in. So we're making mm -hmm. uh, good progress there as well together with them. Um, yeah, so we're really trying to, uh, you know, to utilize and, and show as much as possible all the OWASP projects as well mm -hmm. in the security knowledge framework because, yeah, it makes sense, right? There are awesome projects like the Jew shop. It really fits, you know, into what we also have here. For the people who don't know SKF, so it is an application that you can run and where you have all the information to security related and security development, uh, security verification. It's all in one place, right? With all the best OWASP projects that you can imagine. Um, the SKF has a couple of core features. So you have like, um, for example, knowledge base items. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we did, we created actually knowledge base items per different checklist type. Okay, so here we have web applications. So all these knowledge base items you see over here, I think it's like around 400 different knowledge base items. Uh, they're all related to like a vulnerability or uh, design patterns or something IT security related. Uh, in the sense of web applications, right? Um, and the idea is to give the you know reader a bit more understanding about you know this topic. So, so like secure random generators or code signing. So the idea is that we have a piece of description that will explain more in depth what we are you know dealing with it. What is your uh, what do you need to know as a developer about it? And also we have like a small mitigation. Uh, part as well about it. So what should you do? Well, sign your code and validate the signature and checksums of your code and third party components to confirm the integrity of deployed components, right? So we try to give more context and more, more understanding about certain design patterns or IT mm -hmm. security jargon like race conditions or replay attacks. So you have all these nice uh, um, knowledge base items to help you understand more uh, yeah about you know what you're trying to do if we go to checklist mm -hmm. here we have the checklist these are all categories from the ASVS that we have over here mm -hmm. and for every category you have of course security requirements right so you can click on them and here okay. you see for the category one of the ASVS all the different security requirements uh, yeah that you should think of and implement so if I go now back to knowledge base, you will see that for mobile, there are no knowledge base items yet. So the mm -hmm. idea is that per checklist that you have in SKF, you have their dedicated knowledge base items that belong to, for example, mobile applications. So in SKF, we split everything up. So you have checklist and for every checklist, you have their own dedicated knowledge base items. So here you can just add like a new knowledge base item that now will only be shown for when you are working on mobile applications. So those knowledge base items, those checklists, those code mm -hmm. examples, they're like reference material. So in wow. SKF, when you need to have some guidance or you want reference, you can mm -hmm. just go to those and get uh, one place to write, you know, uh, output, like, like the right guidance. Um, another important thing that we have in SKF is actually the managing of projects. Um, so the idea is that you can create an SKF, your own project, your, like your development project you're working on. And you can right. then, um, for that project, that feature, that sprint you're building uh, in that project, you can get like the security requirements that go with it mm -hmm. based on what you're building. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually for that, we are using the ASVS or the MASVS to get those uh, requirements. Right. So what we did, we already built some of the like um, outputs, for example, of the ASVS. So over here, you can already get all the requirements for, uh, yeah, like you saw for the chapter authentication. So if mm -hmm. you're doing something with authentication, you can have a look here and here right. you see all the level one security requirements that you need to well, implement, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also you can get more information again when you right. click and you see again the, the knowledge base item that is correlated to the security control, the security right. requirement of the ASCS. 
yeah. and you see also that we have like additional resources so links to the different type of cheat sheets of OWASP. Mm -hmm. That is also a great OWASP project. Mm -hmm. So we have still the expert system in SKF. So you can go right. to generate requirements. You go through like a flow. And mm -hmm. in this flow, based on the questions, you get mm -hmm. the right set of requirements back. So right. let's say we're going to build a web application, right? So that we use that checklist of web application. Correct. And we say, well, we're going to build a banking application. So it needs to be level mm -hmm. three. Yeah, very advanced. Right. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, by the way, the, the level of the ASVS, right? How the ASVS also works with the different levels. Correct. Um, well, and then you can say, well, what category? So your chains, what you're building, wh what mm -hmm. will it impact? What type of category? So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe we're doing only uh, new adding like new validation input fields and stuff like that. So we want the validation category. So right. we go next. And now we have a couple of questions over here, the, the expert system, as we call it. And basically based on the questions that we will answer here, it will generate for us the right set of requirements based from the ASVS. So right. let's say we build something that will indeed output something new to the, to the browser, right? right? So it will print it to the client. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using, going to do JSON with that. Uh, and I want input validation requirements as well, because we're taking input, we're showing it, and we're also right. going to use JSON uh, to do so. So we mm -hmm. selected a couple of those things and we said, yes, right? For our feature that we're building, we're going to do that. Um, right. Then I can say, well, this is a new feature, a new sprint that I'm going to do. So you mm -hmm. give the sprint a name and then now we can press submit. And then mm -hmm. the idea is that the security knowledge framework will mm -hmm. correlate from the almost 300 controls in the ASVS and we'll correlate only the ones that are now required for what we actually are going to do, right? What we're going to build. Yeah, so it's like a multi-purpose uh, project wherein you can uh, do the sprint planning, you can do the um, the requirements gathering, you have all the controls that should be uh, in place as part of uh, application security verification standard. Then you've integrated mobile application security verification standard as well. And if a developer wants to understand what kind of code I should have, and if there's a vulnerable code, how to fix it. So that's yeah. also there. Yeah. And on top of it, you've integrated Juice Shop, wherein if you want to test your application security skills, you can do that as part yeah. of the labs. Yeah. yeah, so so that is indeed the last step I didn't show you yet, but we okay. now also have the labs. And mm -hmm. as you can see, you have now action. So uh, I think Juice Shop has like over 100 labs that you can do, mm -hmm. 100 different type of vulnerabilities. Right. And in SKF, we also have around 70 different type of vulnerabilities, right. uh, like the simple ones from local file inclusion to like race condition. But also, indeed, the juice shop, look, he has uh, like more than 100 different type of web application uh, vulnerabilities, right? So right. the cool thing is that you can now, from the SKF, uh, mm -hmm. so I go to lab, so let's say, I don't know, we want to do like a rate limiting uh, lab. Mm -hmm. We can just click on start. So here we got back the URL. It says, well, here's your lab, go to this URL. So let's see if we are lucky. We started now the juice shop from uh, the SKF uh, framework. And yeah, right. here you have uh, Bjorn's uh, juice shop uh, project, right? The great OS project from Bjorn, where you can do, you know, all the, the vulnerabilities and verification and getting the experience um yeah hacking the OWASP juice shop so everything is you know dynamic and ready for also other type of of checklists right um so i think that is also a very you know positive thing now that we really improved in skf that you have that flexibility also build your own checklist or modify like the asvs that is already in there or you know uh yeah it's a framework so you can really you know, modify or adapt it as you want, right? So that was actually, yeah, what I wanted to show you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I would say spread it as far as you can to as much as people because, you know, like you say, <laughs> okay, it's my own project, right? So it's blowing my own horn, but 
you know, it, it is really, you know, in my opinion, enabling people, helping them, you know, getting that security mm -hmm. awareness. You know, when you see my talks of my brother and myself, we also look at developers, call them the Neo, right? The, the person who can change right. the world. Um, you know, and with this, with this information, we can really, you know, let those developers shine, let them build really cool, secure applications by design in a very right. structured manner, right? Yeah, and like you see, we keep putting a lot of energy and effort in it. We keep updating it. We keep improving it. So uh, even though it's an open source project, it's very right. active. It's very on point. Uh, it's also a very uh, interesting approach in the whole uh, software security, <laughs> right? Absolutely, absolutely. This is really, really helpful and uh, totally uh, helping the projects, people, developers, everyone. Uh, making sure that the applications are uh, getting built secure by design. Exactly. Yes. And uh, yeah, also thanks to all the other great OWASP projects, right? Where we uh, reference to like the ASVS, the Juice Shop, the Cheat Sheet series, the MASVS, and all the people yeah. I forgot to mention. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a collaborative, uh, you know, uh, effort and, uh, you know, thanks to, to them as well, that we have something cool like this, right? Yeah, absolutely, totally. Yeah, so thank you so much, Glenn, for joining us today. It's really, really helpful. See you um, soon again in another project series or uh, yeah. we'll have a conversation around these projects. For sure, thank you for the invite. I was happy to be here. Thank you.